everyone. So today, uh, with it being one week until Thanksgiving, I wanted to uh, post, you know, with enough time to prepare, um, a whole bunch of Thanksgiving dinner ingredient substitutions so that, say, you're in charge of making something for the meal, or say you're hosting and you're making most of the components of the meal, or something like that. I wanted you to have a little bit of a resource on how to make that meal healthier so that you're not using as like heavy of ingredients or as calorie dense of ingredients. Like, say you guys are all looking to cut back or something like that, or everybody's always complaining about how heavy or filling um, the dinner usually is, this is the resource for you. So, let's start with the turkey. The best way to make a turkey so that it is not like really, really calorie ridden, I guess, is really just roasting it, okay? Just you know, roasting it the old-fashioned way in the oven in the big roasting pan or something like that, um, rather than deep frying it. That's probably the best way to uh, to handle the turkey with that. Um, deep frying does add the extra calories from the oil and the fat and everything like that. But good old-fashioned roasting, a lot of that just comes right off and then turns into gravy. <laughs> so, um, so that's really the way to handle that. Um, the rest of it just comes with how much you're eating, really, your portions, really. However big your fist is, that's how much you're supposed to be eating as far as a uh, serving of protein for a meal. Um, and then if you're still worried, go with the white meat. All right, It's the dark meat that is more calorie dense. For potatoes, all right, so for potatoes, there's a couple of options. If you absolutely have to make mashed potatoes, I would say think about what you're putting into them when you prepare them after the potatoes have been boiled. Um, consider adding milk, like a lower calorie milk, instead of cream. Yeah, you're going to probably need to still add some butter. I, I think there's no getting around that. But maybe try limiting it to only a couple of tablespoons. So those tablespoons are going to... Um, you know, filter out over a number of servings. So if you're adding two to three tablespoons of butter, consider, uh, figure about 100 calories per tablespoon. Uh, you know, say you're adding three, but like it's going to be for like eight servings. You know, that's not a whole lot of calories from the butter going into that. Salt, pepper, add some parsley, add some garlic, add things that are going to give it flavor, not fat. All right. Another option is instead of uh, mashed potatoes, if you're up to other, or if you're up for other suggestions instead of mashed potatoes, try going with roasted baby uh, baby reds in the oven, if you've got the oven space for it. Baby red potatoes, um, they're good. They give you the extra added fiber that you're going to really need um, after a heavy meal like that. Um, the skin is not as like mealy or harsh tasting I guess. It's thinner skin and you can just leave it on. They're quick to prepare. You toss them in a little bit of oil, throw some seasoning on it, throw it in the oven. Super, super fast. Um, so that would be my suggestion for potatoes, especially if you're not like super staunchly I must have my my mashed potatoes. Cranberries. All right, I know there's like a whole bunch of internet memes right now where it's like, okay, we gotta have that canned cranberry sauce. <laughs> Trust me, that was big in my family too, except like I'm super excited because my mother's actually making the cranberry sauce by scratch and she's going to make it with apple cider. So I'm like, yeah, no, I don't think I want the can this year. <laughs> this sounds really good. But like that was a staple whenever we had um, Thanksgiving over at my, my grandma's house. She'd always get the can. So the can shaped one where it's like the, <laughs> you know, with that crazy sound. Oh my God. So, but either way, um, <laughs> canned stuff isn't always the best, um, especially with something as acidic as cranberries. You know, I, I don't know how true this is. I'd want to look into it, but like there's a possibility that it could leach some of the metallic materials into your food. I always kind of worry about that. Um, but anyways, uh, so with cranberries, you know, fresh or frozen, just kind of boiled over the stove. It's actually really easy to make them. Um, but if you're worried about how much sugar you're adding, consider adding stevia like granulated stevia and just make it to taste you know start with a, a tablespoon or two mix it in make sure it's like somewhat dissolved try it is it enough okay add a little more you're not even adding any calories to that but you're adding the sweet flavor that you're looking for you still want it to taste like cranberries so you know consider that instead or like granulated swerve swerve is interesting that's that's cool I'll be talking about that in a minute um so corn for corn Okay, we usually make cream corn. There's a lot of really bad ingredients in that. But, like, what if you just did butter and garlic? 
or a little bit of butter and just salt or like season your own or butter and parmesan cheese is really good you don't need a whole lot of parmesan for that um it's really good if you do that salt pepper parmesan really easy um, okay, so beans. Green bean casserole. So, um, one of the main ingredients for green bean casserole would be, like, the soup. Like, the cream soup. Like, a uh, cream of mushroom or something like that. And I think that's usually the way we make it. Um, so, with beans, you could substitute that in just for, like, you know, kind of the same way with the, uh, the potatoes. You know, just roast them and, and, like, over an oil and some sort of seasoning that you really like. That sounds like it would go well with beans. I mean, that's really easy. You could use frozen beans for that. <laughs> super simple. If you need to have the casserole, here's what I recommend. Um, and I actually recommend this for the stuffing too because there's not a whole lot of ways to make homemade stuffing better. <laughs> um, so uh, what I would recommend is getting a hold of some turkey stock, which you could then use actually in the stuffing if you wanted. Um, or even chicken stock works as well. Turkey is obviously a little bit more of an authentic flavor. And make up a roux which would be like, um, you know, butter and uh, milk, a little bit of water, you know, just something that's going to thicken it up or use cornstarch if you're good at that. Um, one of the ingredients I've tried using before is xanthan gum, actually, but it's tough. That, that one's really tricky. I think I'd rather go with the cornstarch. Uh, cornstarch seems to be a little bit easier to use. I am not as good at using a roux. If you know how to do it, um, cool. <laughs> Usually Scott's the one that um, has the art of the roux perfect. I've actually never done it. I'm, I'm pretty good with the cornstarch method. So anyways, uh, you use that to thicken up your, your turkey stock. So from there, you can actually, you know, make it up to the consistency you want. Put your beans in that, then top with like a few french fried onions. And actually that's supposed to make a very, very good green bean casserole. So consider that instead, and then you can use some of those strategies for, like, your stuffing then, too, depending on how you guys make your stuffing. Okay. Um, missing one. Oh, yeah. yeah actually, uh, only one more. Squash. Uh, usually we make up, like, a butternut squash. A lot of the main ingredients that go into that butternut squash would end up being, like, your, your sugar, brown sugar, molasses, uh, lots of butter. I still think a little bit of butter should go into it to help with the... Uh, um, with the consistency. Um, marshmallows, like, there's a lot of bad stuff that you can put in a squash. I actually like making butternut squash at various times uh, during the year, actually. I find it to be really easy to roast it up and scoop it out and mix it with stuff. And um, normally my go-tos are a little bit of butter, and sometimes I'll put in brown sugar, but normally the brown sugar I use is Swerve's brown sugar. I swear, there is, like, no difference with that. Um, like, it, it behaves the same way as brown sugar. It tastes like brown sugar, but, like, there's, like, no sugar. It's not actually sugar. It's erythritol. So, like, <laughs> and I think there's, is there stevia in it, too? I'd have to look at the label again. But, like, it's a substitute. It's one of the substitutes that's not so bad for you. And you're only putting a little bit anyways. But because you're only putting a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit here, it all does add up, especially if you're having dessert. So... If you can cut corners in some of the ingredients that don't matter as much for the flavor, not like the brown sugar matters with flavor, it tastes like it anyways, but if you can cut out some of those ingredients that contribute to the added calories, to the added sugar, to the heaviness of the dish, that's all going to add up. And it's going to add up into a meal that, you know, even though it's traditionally really, really unhealthy and really heavy and really calorie dense, like, it won't be as much. So that way then, the rest that you have to think about when you're having this meal is just your portions. You know, that's going to help. That's going to help everybody that you're serving this dish to, or these dishes. So, that's the squash. Now, lastly, dessert. Anybody who knows me well knows I have phenomenal recipes for, like, everything for dessert. Those recipes come in two different forms. Full calorie and let's cut the corners here and make it healthier. <laughs> um, so uh, the specialties that I'm going to be making this year are going to be pecan and apple. I am not cutting corners. I'm cutting portions instead for me, I think. Um, but if I were to cut corners, um, and I have done this in the past, so these methods actually have been tried out by me. Uh, for the apple pie... First thing, you don't want to sacrifice flavor, right? So um, use a variety of different apples. I'm going to a nursery tomorrow to pick out like six different apples to put in my pie, okay? Crust is a 
pretty big issue. Crusts add a lot of calories. So my recommendation is if you don't want to go for a crust, go with a cobbler instead. Actually, uh, a couple years ago, I, I made an apple cobbler in a Dutch oven in the in the um, in the oven, and it was really really good. And I made half the amount of crust and put it on the top. And it was delicious. Um, so for the apples themselves, obviously apples all by themselves are really good. You're not going to be putting a whole lot of ingredients in there. A lot of spices, definitely mulling spices of all sorts. Um, I put in a lot of cinnamon, nutmeg, about half the amount. Okay, so like let's call this in ratios. So for every mm, tablespoon, I don't know. It depends on how big of a portion you want to make. Let's go this. Let's do this with ratios. So let's say um, the ratios that would have like a one ratio. I guess I would go with allspice, powdered clove, cardamom, um, dried orange, like orange peel type of things. It's like in the little like little crumblies, um, but it's orange, and the, that's it. Um, so that's like a one ratio. So twice the amount should be nutmeg four times the amount um, would be the cinnamon, okay? And that's how I make my mulling spices. All that just goes right in there. No calories added. Good nutrients, though. A little bit of butter, um, a little bit of flour, like a tablespoon to thicken it up, a dash of salt. Now, what about the sugar? You're supposed to add sugar. So taste your apples first after you put these things in here, all right? Taste it. Does it need sugar? It may not. Oh, but what about that, like, soupy type of, like, texture that we want? All right, try the granulated stevia. It'll do it. Between that and the butter that you add, because you're supposed to add a tablespoon of butter to this, too, um, that may actually get you what you need. Um, or just put, like, a tablespoon of, like, water <laughs> or cider or something like that. And um, as it cooks down, it's, the juices are going to bleed out of it anyways, and you're going to get something um, that will actually resemble that soupy, caramely type of thing. Um, so that could be your cobbler, and that's actually kind of a healthy dessert. There's not a whole lot of calories in that. The other one I'm going to be making is pecan pie. Yeah, okay, that one's really, really loaded with calories. Um, so ways that you can reduce uh, pecan pie is not using... Um, not using uh, corn syrup. So um, swerve brown sugar, like I was talking about before, um, definitely a really, really good idea for that. Uh, pecan's obviously high in protein, they're rich, um, but it's like that gummy way that it holds it together. That's what makes the rest of the pie here. So um, one of the ways that you can do that is make up your own syrup with like a little bit of water and brown sugar and just kind of mix it up. If, it if you need to thicken it up, you can use a little bit of cornstarch. Um, gives it a little bit of a uh, different texture, but you know, once it all settles, once it all bakes and settles, you're not going to notice that. And um, that's going to give you, um, you know, a way for it all to gel together. Jenny says hi. <laughs> So, um, yeah, and, well, if you've got to have, uh, oh, goodness, i got two kitties here. Um, <laughs> um, so if you need to have a crust with that, well, yeah, I kind of get it. I see. I don't know of a good way to make a better crust. I have tried, like, almond flour and coconut flour with crusts, and it either ends up too mealy or it falls apart. I haven't conquered that quite yet, so for me, regular flour it is. But hopefully those are good some, some good suggestions as to how to make, um, you know, your Thanksgiving dinner a whole lot more healthy, um, a whole lot more conscious of how many calorie-ridden ingredients you're going to be putting into these homemade dishes. Um, certainly if there's any other ideas of, or any other dishes that your family makes that you're like, mm, I'd like a few substitutions for this, hit me up, let me know. I cook all the time, I make substitutions all the time, and they're usually pretty delicious. So let me see if I can help you out, okay? Oh, and watch out, pretty soon I'm going to be announcing something huge that I cannot wait to share with you guys, okay? Alright, so enjoy the rest of your day. I'll probably be doing a live pretty soon again. I'm not sure what day, what my content schedule is looking like for the next few days. I do know I have a sauce I'm supposed to be making. I'm just trying to figure out what day to do it. But stay tuned because there's some really, really good stuff being announced next week. Alright, and let me know if there's any other recipes you'd like me to examine for you. Okay, thank you. Have a good one.